Hello, and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Complex Super Advanced M&A Merger Modeling. The acquirer, which would be Target, we're going to grab in the Target company, which would be JCPenney, grab in their balance sheets from our merger summary. We're going to grab in, as we did on our LBO, we're going to grab in our transaction assumptions based on our sources and uses, calculate our pro forma, which would be the sum of those three columns, and then we're going to project the projected, profit, uh, the projected balance sheet accounts, and same thing here, we'll use our ratios as we did before based off the now new combined company. This also implicitly assumes balance sheet synergies, that you have some kinds of scale, because now instead of just doing a simple addition, target plus acquire balance sheet, we're actually going to redevelop a brand new balance sheet for our entire merged company. Cash flow statement, very similar again. We're going to take our cash flow statement, we're going to calculate CFO, we have a lot more depreciation items, working capital, get to our CFO, do our CFI, which will be the sum of our previous CapEx numbers from Target and Acquire. And then we will go ahead and do our CFF. Again, that now brings us back to the merged company debt suite. The merged company debt suite is going to be significantly expanded. Why is this going to be significantly expanded? Same type of calculation as we've done before on top there to figure out cash requirement or availability. But now we have a lot new debt. We have to incorporate both the Target's debt, the Acquire's debt, and the new debt. And the new debt we have term loan A and B, and the thing is we're going to build in a discretionary debt repayment option, meaning do you want to pay, uh, prepay or pay, if you did not refinance, you want to prepay your debt, and we're going to build in a series of a lot more debt sweeps that will flow through each tranche. Each tranche is going to be dependent on the one on top, so this is your cascading waterfall, if you will. We'll build in it for the target company, JCPenney. We'll build in it for the acquirer, Target, and then we'll, of course, end up with our new debt on the senior notes and sub-debt, and then we'll also build in our revolver, and then everything else is going to be very straightforward. We'll have our total debt balances. We'll have our total debt balances. We're going to do our, we're going to wrap that back to balance sheet and cash flow statement, and we're going to do our interest rates, and we're going to do a lot of choose from this here. Then we're going to go back to balance sheet and cash flow statement, and we're going to complete those, and then we will end up quickly doing our, our quick ratios assumption here as well. So that's the high-level overview of what we're going to do. Now I want to go back to the Merger Summary tab, and let's go ahead and start building this. First thing I want you to do is get yourself to sell G6 on the Merger Summary tab. So in sell G6, we want the name of the acquirer. The acquirer will be Target. So you're going to say in G6 equal, and you're going to grab this from me, for me from Target's income statement. So in G6 equals, control page downs, a lot of control page downs here. This is where our control posture fees are going to come in handy later on. Down to Target income statement, and I need you to go to cell A1 and hit enter. And I will unfreeze frame so you can see A1 is Target company. So we're getting G6 equals Target income statement. Control home to get to A1, hit enter. Who's our Target company being acquired? That's JCPenney. In G7, you'll say equals. Control page down to LBO. Uh, to JCPenney income statement, again, actually I need to unfreeze the frames. So in G7, you say equals JCPenney income statement, control home, get yourself to cell A1, hit enter, and now you've brought in the names of your acquire and your target. The great thing about this model is we will always use these names and go into all the individual tabs. You won't have to keep grabbing them, etc. So this way you keep the model very dynamic and you only need to update these two cells here to quickly update all of your names. Transaction date, G9. Type in same thing, end of fiscal 2004. And before I can do deal structure, before I can do deal structure, I now need you to actually start building our deal structure. So I want you to go to the right hand side. I want you to go to the right hand side. And I want you to go to sell U2. Go to cell U2, and let's go ahead and build in our financing scenarios. U2 says, what is your stock as a percentage of your consideration? Let's type in 50%. And in U4, I want to label. Uh, in U4, I want to know what is the percentage and what is the financing scenario. Let's take a look at our financing scenarios here first. Our financing scenario says the following. We've got an all cash, that would mean that's 100%. We will use this. If we're using all cash deal, these numbers will be a lot higher 
if we did an all stock deal, so that would be 100%, so that would be 0% stock. If we did an all stock deal, here we would do a lot lower numbers. In fact, we will have nothing here except the revolver. And if we did 50-50, we'll have somewhere in the middle. So let's go ahead, and I want you to go to cell U4 and say, well, this cell U4 is going to be dictated. This would be the switch, your choose formula. This 50% will dictate which one of these three financing scenarios to use. So I want you to go to U4 and type in 50-50. 